Hello everyone, my name is Nachiketa and welcome back to another video. This is going to be a very exciting video because I'm going to show you how to use a library called a SHAP to add interpretability and visualization to any of your image classification model. Now I have been working as a computer vision engineer for the past three months and I've seen how important this is. Whenever your deep learning model that you have trained is behaving a certain way, the problem is that you will never be able to clearly understand why that happened. For example, let's say you've taken the image of a dog, which is being predicted as a cat by your deep learning model. Now you need to understand why did that happen? Was there something wrong with the image of the dog? Was that dog, let's say, abnormally small? Did it have a certain type of feet? Why did the model predict something wrong? And based on that, you can change the data set, you can do some kind of augmentation or you can improve the model. But this interpretability is normally lacking in all deep learning models, right? This is going to be a very quick tutorial. This is already present in the original documentation. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. When I'm done with this code, you'll be able to see pixel wise, which pixel of the image played a role in determining the particular output. So let's just get started straight away with the code again. Uh, I've just taken the code just to explain it and it's available on the SHAP's original documentation and there are multiple examples that you can explore over here. So I'm just going to explain the code very quickly. First thing you do is you have to install the SHAP library. All right. And we're going to be importing few things that we're going to be using like JSON, NumPy, we import SHAP and TensorFlow and we also import ResNet over here. So ResNet is basically a pre-trained model that we're going to be using and you can also train your own deep learning model from scratch. But for now, we're just importing the ResNet 50 from TensorFlow and we're directly going to be using the weights which was used in the ImageNet problem. So if you don't know, ImageNet is a very famous problem which has millions of, I think, images in its data set on which this ResNet 50 is already trained. So we're going to be using a pre-trained model basically. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be loading the actual ImageNet 50 data set and it's already present inside SHAP inside data sets and I call the ImageNet 50 data set and I store it as X and Y. So X will have all the images and Y will have the corresponding output for that particular image. So one thing you need to provide to the SHAP library is the name of all the classes. So right now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to get the class indexes, basically the class labels that class number one is let's say a person class number two is let's say a dog so all this information is present in a json file hosted publicly in an s3 bucket in amazon aws so i'm gonna be fetching that over here basically i'm gonna get the json file from that url and when i write json.load file.values it's basically gonna extract all the values or basically all the names of the classes and it's gonna be storing that under class names so when i print the length of the class names and the class names you can see that there are around thousand classes in the ImageNet problem and these are all the classes you can see lots of things like shark or fish or a J and these are basically animals things that are present inside the data set so the ResNet model has already been trained and so if you are working on any image classification problem you'll have a model which is trained and you'll have a data set with all the classes so here's what you have to do with SHAP so I'm going to be using a function called as fx. What this does is it first creates a copy of the input and stores it as tmp and then it takes a temp variable and it provides it to the pre-process input function. So we had imported that at the top over here. What this does is it basically takes any image it gets and pre-process it exactly the way the resident model needs it. So it's a predefined function basically and then we basically provide the TMP variable to the model and we return that. Next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a function called as shape.maskers.image and this is used to create a mask on the original image. So basically to visualize the feature wise importance of every pixel, we're going to be creating a mask and this parameter over here basically mentioned what kind of mask you want to use, right? And again, this is the all predefined by the SHAP library. Another thing that you have to provide is the data set shape. So the input shape goes over here. Instead of this, I can also write 224, 224, 3. And I can remove this part as well if this confuses you. So basically, you have to provide the shape of the model to this. So it creates a mask for that particular shape. Next thing what we're going to be doing is we call a sharp.explainer. 
and we provided these three arguments we have to provide what are the class names we have to provide the masker variables and we have to provide the f function and once it is ready we simply have to use one line which internally generates something called as the sharp values so sharp value is nothing it basically represent the pixel importance of each pixel in the image for example if there were a particular set of pixels which had a very high value in determining the output those pixels will have a high sharp value and pixels which are not important will have a low sharp value so you have to call explainer and you have to provide it these arguments so you basically first provide what images you want to get the feature importance for so for now i'm just going to visualize the first three images and you have to provide it max evaluations is equal to some number for now i'm taking it as 500 so this basically means it's going to take 500 random images and it's going to make the predictions for that and then using the input and the predicted values it's going to study which pixel played an important role in determining the output after that i specify the batch size is equal to 50 so it's going to use 50 images at a time so in outputs over here i mentioned how many of the top classes i want to get the probability for and i mentioned the top four classes so the basically when you give the model an input image it will give you probability of it belonging to all the thousand classes but we're only gonna be using the top four probabilities so let me just run this code so after i run this you just have to write this final line you have to use the image plot function and you have to provide it the sharp values once you run this you will be able to see the magic of this library so this is what this does right so this is one input image and you can see what were the top four classes that the model predicted it for so the model says the maximum probability is that this image is an american egret and these are the other three classes now what is important over here is the red values that you see these red boxes that you see these are the pixels that played the most important role in determining the output so i can see that the little bump around the neck was what played the crucial role in classifying it as an american egret so this heat map is what explains it so if a value is very pink that means it has a high sharp value and if it's a dull color that it means it has a sharp value of zero so any color on the extreme of this scale either left or right has a role to play in determining the output so the top two classes for this image is an american egret and a crane so i just googled how an american egret looks like and how a crane looks like so you can see the only visible difference is actually a little bump around the neck this is how an american egret looks like and that is what my model used for classification when i see why did it classify the image as a crane then the differentiating factor was somewhere around its head maybe its beak and maybe how its eyes look and when i look at the crane image it sort of seems pretty accurate right similarly you can look at the other analysis if this image was classified as a speedboat what was the differentiating factor so this pixel over here is in red so maybe the person standing over here or maybe the horizontal deck of this boat was playing a crucial role and similarly for this image it was classified as a puck puck is basically a disc that is used in ice hockey why was it classified that way right so some black objects over here maybe it shoes that is why it was classified that way and based on this you can make some changes you can understand what problems are there in your images right so that is why i feel this library is extremely useful and that was all for this video i'll bring out more tutorials on this on different kind of deep learning models if you did like this video do like it and subscribe to this channel and i'll see you again in the next video